Some of my most frequently asked questions on, uh, on YouTube and Twitch and Discord and Twitter are how do I beat X weapon? How do I beat Lance? How do I beat Axe? How do I beat Greatsword? So I figured rather than answering every single person individually, you know, taking all that time to do that, why don't I just make a little mini-series, a crash course of videos about strategies to fight every single weapon in Brawlhalla, and then I can direct people there so that, uh, you know, you have a strategic game plan, a concrete understanding uh, of some strategies to implement when you queue into those weapons in Ranked or, or with your friends or even a tournament. So, yeah, I'm going to start with Axe because it was the most highly requested one, and uh, let's just begin. So I'm going to go over a brief overview of the weapon, every single move, strengths, weaknesses, strategy, how they want to build damage, how they want to KO you, uh, what to do in juggles, what to do in edge guards, stuff like that. Uh, it's going to be a nice casual, you know, one take commentary type of deal as if you were asking me on stream. In fact, I'm doing this live on stream right now. So yeah, sit back, relax, enjoy, and hopefully uh, learn a little bit along the way. Sorry to interrupt, I just, uh, I always forget to say this, so if you, if, if you enjoy the videos, consider checking if you're subbed, no big deal. If not, uh, you know, it, it's free and it helps out a lot. So, yeah, thanks. Sorry again. Let's start by going over every single move on the kit. We'll start with Enlight. So Enlight, what are its strengths? What are its weaknesses? Very, very quickly. So its strengths, it's its fastest forward grounded option. It's its only grounded kill option, really, since Downlight kills super late and Sidelight can't kill on its own. Uh, so that's its strengths. It also has a pretty big hitbox. We'll turn on hitboxes, actually, for the entirety of this. If you take a look, it's pretty wide. It's pretty big. Uh, if you GC it, you're also able to hit grounded targets and aerial targets, even though I just misspaced that a little bit. Not an axe player, by the way, but there you go. So those are its strengths, it's in the front, you know, always a good option to have on a, on a kit like this that's fairly slow, you know, relatively speaking. So the axe isn't even that slow of a weapon, it's just when you compare it to other stuff. Uh, what are its drawbacks? Well, depending on your positioning, you can punish this end light from any direction, which is not true for every weapon on the kit, and I'll get into that later. Uh, it is a little bit punishable, you're kind of stuck here for a little while. You'll notice I'm mashing this attack, and the amount of time that it takes for me to get to the second one is a good amount of time given how much I'm swinging, so, uh, so that's one thing about that. Uh, also, you can punish it from above, even though it has this forward hitbox, it doesn't have any coverage above you. So if you're struggling a lot against Axe End Light, floating above it and punishing it like a, with a down air, because let's say uh, this Mirage is jumping and the Axe user whiffs, you can punish them from above. And if they whiff like this, you can punish them... Uh, okay, I didn't whiff. I meant to not hit them, but I hit them by accident. Uh, if they punish like this, you can still punish them uh, from the front, which is not true for every move, and I'll, again, I'll get into that later. So that's very quick on End Light. Uh, side Light. So Side Light is probably one of the moves, if you struggle against Axe, that you tend to struggle with the most, and I'll get more into avoiding how to take damage and avoiding how to get stringed uh, later in this in this video, but very, very basically, this side light is extremely good. It has a lot of range. You'll notice how much distance is covered by this dash impulse. I mean, that's going to hit from mid-stage, and it's all the way across the map, right? So that's a lot of distance. You really have to be careful about this. It's also their main bread and butter combo tool. Uh, side light into Nair, side light into Sair, side light into Downlight. All those are true combos depending on positioning. So you really want to watch out for Sidelight. Its weakness, it has two weaknesses, and its weakness is also its strength. So part of its strength is that it moves you. That's also a weakness because it's not going to be able to hit stacked. If someone's walking towards the axe user, this is just going to whiff and then they're going to be punished. And the other thing is that, uh, it, it's, that it's a little bit punishable. It locks you in here for a little while. You'll notice the amount of time. Okay, like look look how long it takes me to end light again after end lighting, right? That's pretty quick. You turn around and then you do it again. For Sidelight, you're stuck there for a little while. So, uh, th that's, the, uh, th that's the drawback of side light. Also, uh, at the same time, even though it does have this vertical hip, well, uh, I didn't line of accent. It has this vertical hitbox, which is super, super good. Actually, I should show off how high this hits because it's pretty high, it's a little bit deceiving. Uh, it is not uh, completely covered from above. So let's say I time this correctly, this Mirage is jumping. I'm gonna be able to, uh, I'm gonna be able to hit them like this, and it's still gonna hit. But you saw that first time, if I do whiff, you're left wide open. So those are the drawbacks of side light. One of the best moves on the axe kit, again, like I mentioned, I'm going to talk more about uh, how to avoid those later when I talk about movement and avoiding damage and stuff like that. But very basically going over the moves. Next up is downlight. So downlight is a stacked grounded option and an anti-air. It's extremely, like, I mean, just look at this hitbox. It's so good. Uh, it, it covers this much space and this hitbox was even nerfed a little while ago. So that should tell you how good it is. Like I mentioned, it does hit stacked and it hits uh, in the air. This is one of Axe's best juggling tools. I imagine if you struggle to land against Axe, 
attacks, this move is your nightmare. That's a, another upside, a little bit of a hidden upside that you may not even know about, is that this move jumps on uh, off the ground. And what, what does that mean? Well, if we took a look at your, or if we take a look at your hurt box, which is essentially like this little cube or this little, sur <laughs> definitely not a cube. I don't know why I just said cube. This is your, uh, this is what it takes to get hurt. So if you, uh, if a hitbox encounters this little, you know, circle here, you get hit. And what happens with downlight is when you use it, your hurt box jumps up into the, up into the air like this and that means that you can avoid certain grounded attacks sword down light bow down light you just completely jump over those so that's another upside about this move very very good very solid move grounded axe kit as you notice has a lot of coverage coverage in front coverage horizontally and coverage vertically what is the drawback of down light well there's not that big of a drawback the main thing is that it doesn't have that much horizontal range to hit it on the ground you need to be very close so that's one thing. Uh, the, the other thing is that it doesn't have any hitbox directly behind it anymore. It used to have a hitbox uh, kind of behind it. You'll notice that the, in this area, uh, it, it covers right here. It used to have a hitbox all the way back here as well. It doesn't have that any longer. So that's kind of the drawback. But a lot of the time, if the person spaces it correctly, uh, like when are they going to be using downlight? They're going to be using downlight when you're in the air. A lot of the time, you're not going to be able to punish this axe downlight. And sometimes the best punish is no punish at all. And instead, anticipating the next move and trying to punish them from there. So a lot of the time you're gonna like, uh, let, let's say you're playing against Axe, they're juggling you a lot, they're hitting you with all these nares, they're hitting you with these downlights, and you just keep trying to hit them when they do downlight, you keep trying to punish their downlight, and you keep missing it. And then because you keep missing it, then they get another opportunity to hit you, and then you just start getting blended in the Axe rhythm, and you can't do anything about it. So sometimes you just need to take a step back, in order to beat downlight, you don't beat downlight, you beat what they do after the downlight. So that's there. Uh, th th those are the grounded moves. We'll turn off the hurt boxes here. Let's talk about the aerial kit really quickly. Nair is one of the best juggling tools in the game. It's very quick. It doesn't have that many active frames, as you can see. It's only one, two, three. Uh, and then, you know, no more act activity after that. But those three frames are good enough given how big this hitbox is. So this is, like I mentioned, uh, and I'm sure you've experienced, one of the best juggling tools. It's a string tool. You know, sidelight into Nair is a true combo, and then from there you can string into, you know, whatever else you want, really. Uh, you can do it into recovery. You can do it into downer. You can do it into a GC sigs and, and stuff like that. So it's a very, very good tool like for that. It covers a bunch of space. As you can see, this is like a little bit of a crescent moon here, uh, a little bit of an arch, very, very good space. You can kind of catch people on the ledge if you do it right here. You'll notice this will still hit them, even though you're not really aiming at them. Uh, a lot of vertical coverage when someone's trying to come down and edge guard you. So something that people, like a lot of people do, is they come down and they try to ground pound you. And then axe users, they just do this. And then they don't get hit, they get a chase dodge, they can come back. So, what are the drawbacks of Nair? Well, for one, it doesn't hit stack, it doesn't hit grounded, so as you'll notice, this will completely whiff. So let's say you're playing against an axe user and you are grounded, if they do this, that's a free punish. The other thing is that it does have a little bit of recovery time, so if they whiff it, and let's say you're matching their height horizontally like this, uh, if they whiff it, you're going to be able to punish them. So that's, that's the one thing. Uh, another uh, pro about it that I forgot to mention is that you can carry momentum. So you can pretty much go any direction you want as you're using it. You can fade back, you can whiff and probably be safe depending on your movement. Uh, so that's something to also keep in mind is a lot of the time you're not going to be able to punish an axe user just throwing out the snare all willy nilly. Uh, they need to be throwing it out in a position either where they're spaced poorly or you're spaced extremely well. Uh, so that's snare. Side air, now this is a move that I'm going to highlight way more later, but this is one of the key moves to avoid for knockouts because this is Axe's main knockout tool. It's also a string tool, you can use it out of stuff like that, but generally speaking, this move is very straightforward. It has a hitbox forward, it has a hitbox above, it ha has a hitbox below. So if we take a look at this, Here's the first wave of the hitbox. It hits a little bit below, as you can see. Then it hits forward and above. So there's a lot of situations where people are like, oh man, that axe there shouldn't have hit me because they're slightly below or slightly above. But that's just the way the move is designed. So learning that hitbox is very important because, I mean, in the middle of a match, you're not a balanced player you're, or you're not a balanced dev, right? You're not going to be able to change that. So uh, learning how to play with it, learning how to play against it, uh, learning where it hits exactly is very, very important. Uh, the strengths of this move are pretty obvious. It has a lot of force. It has a good amount of range, a good amount of distance a good amount of coverage and it's a, a good amount of damage as well the drawback is well it's twofold number one is that the move is pretty punishable so if you whiff it you're going to be locked here for a while as you can see i'm stuck there for a good amount of time again using end light as a comparison point that is a that is a good amount of time the other thing is that unlike Nair, you don't just have free flowing momentum you're able to just reel back and do whatever you want this side air 
let's say you do have momentum and you hold in one direction, yeah, you're going to be able to fade back a lot. But if you try and reverse your direction, you're completely stuck in place. And so if, a, if an Axe user is trying to bait you and kill percent, you know, this is often something that happens. Uh, this Mirage, you know, let's say they're, uh, they're in the red, right? We'll put them in the red. This is one of the most common scenarios in Brawlhalla. They're in the red, an Axe user is jumping up, they get baited, and then they get hit by that side air, right? It's like, oh, I'm just jumping up, they get baited, and they get hit by that side air. So that's a very, very common situation. And oftentimes what happens is the Axe user will go for the side air anyway, and let's say they miss. So let's say they do this and they miss the side air. If they try and hold back, they're not going to be able to escape, so you can just punish them. And that's uh, that's one of the pros. The cons is that if you do get baited, and again, I'm going to talk more about this later, uh, you just die. So avoiding side air is one of the keys, about, uh, keys to fighting Axe. Um, and one of the best things you can do for yourself is to actually play a little bit of Axe, learn the exact range, learn the timings, how long you have to punish, uh, and go from there. So those are the drawbacks of side air. Let's talk about down air now. Down air, one of the, uh, I guess one of the pillars of the Axe kit, one of the pillars of floaty Brawlhalla in general. This move has two different uses. It has normal dare and it has grounded dare, so I'll talk about both. Normal dare is pretty straightforward. Like I mentioned with people floating with, uh, with Sair, people do that with dare and neutral a lot to build up damage. It's one of the quickest moves in the game uh, that's this effective at hitting downward immediately. Like it's faster than sword dare, for example. Um, it's also very, very good off stage. You probably have been getting getting blended a little bit if you struggle against Axe off stage because they can just, uh, if you mash jump, they just dare you and then dare you and then dare you again. Uh, also, if you do a grounded dare, you can get true combos, which is pretty cool. You can get this into this. Uh, you can get this into this if you space it correctly, although they're too high HP at the moment. It also strings into down air into side air at lower HPs, or at higher HPs, I should say. There we go. Uh, and Dare is pretty much a universal tool on the Axe Kit, no matter what Axe player you're playing against, they're at least going to hit you with a Dare once in the match, uh, so learning how to avoid it is important. And, and here's something to keep in mind, you cannot react to the startup of this down air, you can react to their positioning, you can react to their, uh, the, the placement of where they're trying to hit it or where they're trying to be, but generally speaking, in the moment, you're not able to react to the move itself. From the moment they press the button, it's so fast that this hitbox will come out before you even realize it. So knowing the positioning of what Axe players are going to do, like Side Air, you can kind of react to the startup depending on uh, depending on how keyed in you are, how good your reaction time is, how obvious they've been, how low your mental stack is. You know, reaction time is something that changes a lot. Down air, you're not going to be able to. So in order to contest down air, in order to avoid down air, in order to beat down air, you're going to need to learn how it feels to play down air. You know, so picking up axe is something I definitely recommend if you struggle against it. That's any weapon in Brawlhalla, uh, just to learn its options and how it feels to play it. Generally speaking, this move, its main weakness is just horizontal, which is pretty obvious, I guess. Uh, it doesn't have any horizontal hitbox, so if you're both jumping up in the air like here and they go like this, okay, not like that, and they go like this, not like that. Wow, I'm actually hitting them by accident, which I guess is kind of a testament to how strong it is. If they go like this, you're going to be able to hit them with a cider, for example. So, yeah, that, that, that's the main weakness. But generally speaking, Axe Downer is one of those moves that, unless you're directly below it, like, let's say you're like this, right, and they use it, uh, maybe you're able to, can I, can I even uh, get them to do, I don't know if I can get them to do a recovery here, but, um, yeah, if they're like this, you can recovery them if they whiff it. But generally speaking, unless they're landing down with it, uh, this is another one of those moves that sometimes you just have to be like, okay, I'm not going to get the punish here. Let's follow their movement, see what they do next. Maybe they panic jump, maybe they uh, panic recovery, maybe they dodge, maybe they do whatever it is. Instant attack, something like that. Um, another thing about Axe Down Air, like I mentioned, because it has the grounded version, it makes Axe one of the more difficult weapons to juggle, because rather than, you know, worrying about, okay, I only need to worry about this Sair range, or I need to worry about the Down Air, because let's say you're ed you're, uh, you're against a weapon like Sword, right? You're juggling Sword, you got them in the air, they're falling down, maybe you have to worry about this Down Air a little early, and you have to worry about this Side Air range, right, as they're attacking towards the ground. But you don't have to worry about this Down Air into the ground, because it just won't hit you. Like, it, it, this move won't hit you unless they time it a little bit earlier. With Axe though, even if you're directly above them, or, or they're directly above you I should say, this Axe Dare will still hit you because of, of that grounded dare. So you have to be careful. Also it spikes if you're not aware. Uh, so if they use it on the edge like this, they're able to keep you trapped in the corner for a little while longer. Uh, learn the strings, learn the timings, because you know if I turn on stun here, uh, I'm able to get, like, let's say uh, you practice this and you're like, oh, okay, when can I dodge out of that? Well, I can't dodge out of that one. If they space this one correctly, I won't be able to dodge out of that. But the timings for these axe grounded combos are very, very finicky. You notice that's a seven dodge window, meaning you can jump out of that one. You don't even need to use your dodge. So spend some time in training mode, learn the stun, because these downer combos are very brutal. They put you into juggle situations, and if you want to win against axe, 
you gotta avoid those axe damages because uh it, if all they need is one cider to kill you, you're you're not in a great spot. But if they if they need to you know mix things up, do an end light to kill you, then you're 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 much better off. So yeah, those are the basic aerials. Those are the basic grounded moves. Let's go very quickly over recovery and ground pound. So recovery, uh, let's turn off the stun here. Recovery. This move, a lot of people think it's random. It is not random. It has a set path every time you use it, and it also has a set hitbox every time you use it. So first, the strongest hitbox on recovery is the first hitbox right here. It's very high. It hits you immediately. This is the type of thing that will just kill you. You know, if you die off the top to axe recovery, oh my god, I just glitched the game. Okay. If you die off the top with axe recovery, this is why the first few hitboxes, these are the strongest parts. And then it goes behind. Now this hitbox is also very, very strong. This is the thing that just sends you at like a 70 degree angle downward. And and then finally it has this or not finally then it has this downward hitbox the spike hitbox that i'm sure you've been gimped by and it's like whoa i wasn't supposed to die by that and then finally it has this very very weak last hitbox at the very end that's consistent every single time you use axe recovery it's like that very important to learn that if you're an axe player and very important to learn that if you're not an axe player because if they do stuff like this okay you jump high they're gonna hit you with the start of it let's see if i can get mirage to uh to recover in the way that I want them here. I, I don't know if I can get the bot to do it, but if you do it like this, they're getting spiked, right? And, and that's like very intentional. So Axe players will often recover towards the wall so that you get spiked by the bottom of their recovery. And it's an intentional thing that they're doing uh, to edge guard you, right? It's not like an accident. Like that, that right there was not an accident. So learning about that is very important. How, what is the weakness of this move? So, Because obviously that's a huge strength. Huge hitboxes, good amount of knockout power. It can reversal an edge guard. I just pressed that button by accident. What are the weaknesses of Axe Recovery? Well, for one, it always has a set path. So it's not like Sword Recovery. You can't use it like this and then just steer yourself out of the way. If you use an Axe Recovery, you're committing to that distance. Which means that if you're playing against an Axe character, you know exactly where they're going to be when they use that Axe Recovery. You know where they're going to end up, because they always have to end up in the same place. So that's that's one thing. If you're struggling to edge guard this move, then uh, it's important to learn the spacing of it because the spacing will always be the same. With a little bit of an exception, which is that if they use exhausted recovery, which is an option that higher level players tend to incorporate more, uh, that's also something to learn. So it's an extra option. But generally speaking, this right here, always the same distance. So learn that. Second weakness, it has a little bit of startup. Until Cannon was put into the game, this was the slowest starting recovery in Brawlhalla. You'll notice, how much time does it take when I press the button, which is right now, and how much time until the actual hitbox comes out, right? That's a good amount of time. It's not, you know, instant like this. It takes a little while for the hitbox to come out. So you can interrupt them before the recovery even starts. And let's say recovery is the last option they have. Either you can do one of two things. Because it goes a set amount of distance, you can just, you know, hover right above where it's going to end up and then ground pound or dare. Or you could uh, interrupt it before it even begins. Because if it's the only thing they can do, then uh, then they're going to have to do it and you can do it uh, and you can hint them, you can interrupt them before it even starts. Let's say you have gauntlets, for example. This is one of the reasons why axe into gauntlets can sometimes be very difficult off stage. Gauntlets can get underneath axe and nair them before the hitbox even starts. And if they don't do it before the hitbox starts, they're still fine because if they're a little bit slow, the first hitboxes, remember, are the ones above, not the ones below. So you can see why, like if a gauntlet gets under you as axe, they can just nair you before that bottom hitbox starts. The other weakness about this is that it can't cover everywhere at once. So yes, this covers a 360 degree area around you. 360, I couldn't say that. I'm also losing my voice. I need to, I'm speaking too much. Um, it covers a 360 degree around you, but it doesn't cover 360 degree, degrees at the same time. So when it's hitting in front, it's not hitting behind. When it's hitting above, it's not hitting below. When it's hitting behind, it's not hitting in front. And when it's hitting uh, below, it's not hitting above. So that means if you miss the first part, like let's say you're in position to punish axe recovery, you don't hit them here you can still hit them from above when they're in the middle of the move you can hit them during their dead zones so that's uh so that's very important all right so that's axe recovery again i'll get more into avoiding this move when i talk about avoiding knockouts but those are the basic strengths and weaknesses let's talk about ground pound this move now if we're talking force fields this is actually a force field because it rotates so fast that the dead zones a lot of the time don't even matter uh that's the main difference between ground pound and recovery is that the dead zones 
countering the dead zones tends to be more luck than uh, than precise timing a lot of the time because it's so fast. The other thing is that this move, uh, it, it's kind of universal, right? It's used off stage. It can be used on stage. It's often used at a string. Sidelight near into ground pound is very common. Uh, you can do dash jump ground pounds. It has an activation hitbox. So if you notice my hand, if you hold it for a little bit, my hand has a hitbox. And what that hand is, is it means it automatically activates without you pressing anything if it comes into contact with another player's hurtbox. So those, those are some strengths. It also hovers you or keeps you in the air a little bit uh, so that you don't fall as fast, meaning that you're able to survive for longer. If you dash jump it, it can hit grounded as I've been doing. Uh, it, it's just a fantastic move all around. This is the kind of thing that you don't want to contest un unless you have perfect positioning, right? There's some moves that unless you have perfect positioning or perfect circumstances, like maybe you're using it like this, or, or they're using it like this and you have gun stare. Maybe you have spear stare, something that can beat it horizontally. But if you're trying to unarm stare against this move, you will always lose. Like nine times out of ten unless you get super super lucky so this is the kind of move if they're using it like this and you're the mirage instead of trying to recover straight around or, or straight into the fin you should try and recover around so let's say they're doing this right they're falling down with this ground pound maybe either you can do one of two things maybe you go around them and try and jump around like this or maybe you fast fall below them, wait for it to end, and then nair, get a chase dodge, and survive. I'm gonna just SD here because I'm wall slipping. Uh, if you don't know, wall slip carries over uh, to how many jumps you're allowed, how many aerial jumps you're allowed in between uh, until you lose your stock. So uh, I, I don't want to have exclamation points all over the map and everything like that. So yeah, that's that's ground pound. Counterplay a lot of the time is evasion. You really don't want to contest this move in a one-on-one -on -one scenario, as in they're throwing out a hitbox and you're throwing out a hitbox at the same time. Uh, either wait for it to finish or go around it. That's the kind of thing. Uh, also, a little bit of a note against Axe, I'm sure you've been hit by this uh, off stage, is this, which is down air into down air into down air into ground pound immediately, right? And that's the kind of thing that you will avoid that if you take note of your jumps, if you don't immediately mash jump every time you get knocked off stage. And so uh, I feel like that's a good transition to talking about avoiding KOs, uh, because that you know that's how you die off stage with KOs. So, one thing to note about avoiding Axe KOs. Axe struggles to kill on the ground. Asterix. Neutralite's pretty good at killing on the ground. But where is Axe best at killing? In the air. In the air. Recovery and side air are your two top priorities to avoid. Uh, in kill percent against Axe. If nothing else, if you die to end light, that's okay. Because it means that they had to damage you like th with 30 extra damage compared to dying by Sare. Your number one priority should be avoiding Sare, your number two priority should be avoiding recovery, and your number three priority should be avoiding like signatures and stuff like that. So how do you avoid side air? This is very, very important. The number one best thing you can do for yourself to avoid side air is learning the spacing, learning the coverage, learning the hitboxes, like I mentioned earlier. But once you learn that, how do you actually implement that into a game? Well, the first thing is knowing that, like, how does an axe player want to kill you? How do they want to get this side air? They want to do it when you mess up. They don't want to throw out a side air and not know if it's going to hit. They want to throw out a side air and know it's going to hit. And how do they know it's going to hit? By baiting you to whiff an attack. That's the number one reason why uh, you get KO'd by Axair is because they've baited you into throwing out an attack. And how do you beat that? You don't get baited. So let's say they're jumping around. They're waiting for you to attack. They're doing this, right? This looks very familiar. They're jumping around. You get really anxious. You get really nervous. You're like, I don't know when they're going to throw it out. So you immediately do something like, uh, I don't know. You're on spear. You're, oh, wait, 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 wrong, wrong player. You're on spear. You do an end light, right? You're waiting for them to land. JK. You're not waiting for them to land. You're waiting for yourself to respawn. So yeah, that's the number one thing is not to get baited. And how do you not get baited? You ask you focus, you focus exactly on when I'm going to throw an attack, when I'm going to spot dodge, when I'm going to jump, because those are the three things that they're going to be looking for. Either they're going to wait for you to attack. They're going to wait for you to spot dodge. Like let's say that was a spot dodge. They wait for you to spot dodge. They're going to wait for you to panic jump after you whiff like this Mirage whiffs. And then what's the most common option after whiff? Jump. So they just uh, immediately attack in the air and, and wait for you to jump. So you don't get baited by them. When they're floating like this, recognize, okay, I know what options they have. They have this down air, which is not going to kill me when I'm in the red. They have this side air, which is going to kill me in the red. They have this nair, which just won't hit me. And they have this ground pound. Those are what the things they can do. Uh, that Obviously, that's very simplified. They can do things like landing into end light. They can do like GC down sync and stuff like that. But very, very simplified. Those are the main things that they can do in this situation. When the game state is there in the air, I'm on the ground. This is the primary thing they're looking for. 
and so you don't want to give it to them. You want to make their job as hard as possible. When they're floating like this, mix things up. Instead of always doing that spear end light, maybe sometimes you just backdash, wait for them to land, and then do something like that, or do something like that, right, to punish their landing. Because uh, if they land with the Sair, remember, they're just locked in there for a while. That's the drawback of Sair, is it keeps you in place. So when they're floating like this, do everything in your power to focus on the moment. Don't throw out attacks randomly. Don't throw out panics randomly. Don't just jump because your fingers do it before you can even realize you're doing it. Be intentional with your movement. Be intentional with your attacks and be intentional with your dodges because that's going to make their job harder. You might still die by Sair. They might just completely read you and that's totally okay. It's going to happen. Sometimes you'll also just mess up and you're gonna panic and that's gonna happen. But the more that you're actively thinking about exactly what you're trying to do, the more that you actually are doing what you want to do, the more you're intentional with it, the harder their job is gonna be. And that's your goal. Instead of giving away a free end light here and letting yourself get sared, maybe mix things up. Maybe maybe sometimes you do end light, but maybe sometimes you jump up and match their height and suddenly they can't side air you because your side air is gonna be faster than theirs because this is a slower weapon. Maybe sometimes you dash in and then dash out and you mix up your positioning and they don't know where you are. You know, there's no right option. There's no one thing that's gonna solve the problem uh, of not getting hit by those side airs in red. And there's also no right option. And that's kind of a problem, right? Sometimes people want certainty. They want guaranteed, oh, I just need to do this to win. But the thing is that sometimes there's a lot of wrong options and sometimes the wrong options, quote unquote wrong op options, are right options because they don't expect it. The only way you're gonna figure out how to do new things is gonna be to try out new things. And so, you know, you're picking a lot of options, having things to actually mix up with, you're gonna find out by experimenting, realizing things don't work, realizing this thing works and that thing doesn't work, and this thing works in this situation, and this thing works sometimes, and this thing doesn't work sometimes. It's just adding more tools to your toolkit, and that should be your goal. Because, you know, sometimes you always opt for one option, and if you opt for one option, then the op opponent only needs to pick one option. But if you opt for six different options, the opponent needs to guess between which of those six you're gonna do. And that's just a much higher chance of you surviving. So that's how to avoid side air a little bit about, uh, you know, being intentional with your movement, know when you're jumping, know when you're attacking, and be careful. Look at replays, notice that people are just doing this and you're falling for it every time. And next time, when they're doing this and you're waiting for it and you're getting really, really anxious because it's last stock red and you're gonna rank down if they, uh, if they hit you with the side air and you immediately just want to end light to hit them as they land, Recognize, no, they're not going to land. I'm not going to get baited today. And then you're going to punish that side air. So next up is one of the most common strings, the reason why people die to axe recovery a lot, and it's side light nair into recovery. So if we set this AI to jump every time I hit them with a side light nair, let me set this damage value to like, I don't know, 140. I side light nair, and then I recovery, and then you die, right? Even earlier than that, it doesn't need to be 140. We can set it at like 100, you'll probably still die because uh, this is small brawl haven. So side light into nair, this is important to know. Sidelight at kill percent, if you have your dodge up, cannot kill you. Sidelight into Sair is no longer a true combo in kill percent. It used to be. Sometimes if you got hit by Sidelight close, because Sidelight close into side air is true at lower HPs, this is no longer a true combo at high HPs. So if you have your dodge up, you should not be immediately worried about Sidelight killing you in kill percent. And that's part of why staying grounded against uh, Axe in kill percent is pretty good because uh, their kill moves are in the air, or their biggest kill move is in the air. They have end light, but that's higher risk, right? It freezes you in place. So uh, staying on the ground, even if you get hit by a side light and kill percent, if you have your dodge up, you should be able to live. And so what do they do? Higher level axe players will know that. They won't go for side light into side air, and they'll go for side light into nair, which is guaranteed damage. And what happens when they side light into nair? You jump because you're like, oh no, 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 I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die. And you get hit by recovery. This happens a lot. I mean, I do this all the time too. When you're caught up in the moment, it's very easy to fall into this trap. So recognize what options you have. So if they side light nair into recovery you, and you do nothing, it's not gonna hit. And by do nothing, generally we're talking about fast falling here, because obviously if you're just standing still, they can do this. But if you fast fall, it won't hit you. If you jump directly up, it will hit you. But even if you jump and you jump in the opposite direction, it won't hit you. See this mirage? This mirage is jumping left. It's not going to hit. Now, if they read your movement with your jump, you're still going to die to it because they can do that. But, you know, if, if you know they're going to go for a side light near recovery, you can still get out of the situation by panic jumping. Now. You don't even need to panic jump. 
you can just fast fall. Because this is not guaranteed either. Maybe you can dodge. Maybe you don't even have your dodge and you can jump out of that one. But you can react to what they do after side light and air. You don't have to immediately, you know, panic jump. You can look at their character model, see are they jumping up with this recovery, are they jumping up with the side air, and react accordingly. Dying to side light and air into recovery is another one of those things like it's giving the, the axe player an easy way out. Because there is things that you can do to escape it, there are things you can do to escape it, I should say. And sometimes you will die to it, and that's totally okay. I die to it, like I've been mentioning. You know, I, I lose games all the time, so... This is just having a strategic game plan. When you get hit by Sidelight into, a, into Nair, you don't have to just die. Sometimes you will die, but you don't have to. And again, it's all about making their job harder, because the harder they have to work, uh, the harder their, <laughs> their job is going to be, and the more opportunities you have to take the game. So that's avoiding sidelight into uh, sidelight sidelight into uh, kill setups, I should say. Now let's talk about how they want to build up damage, and this will be the final thing, because uh, I don't want this to go on for too long. So how Axe wants to build up damage? Priority number one, the easiest way for Axe to build up damage is true combos. Sidelight into Nair. This is the absolute easiest way that, that Axe will build up damage. Because it's quick, it's effective, it sets you up for a juggle situation. Even if they don't get anything like immediately like this three piece for example, that you're still stuck in the air, they can hit you with these, suddenly you're in the orange, now you're panic jumping, now you're panic end lighting, oh you're off stage, you're dead, right? So the number one thing you want to avoid is sidelight into Nair. You, wanna, you don't want this to be a move that you get hit by uh, just raw and neutral. You want it to be a move that hits you only as a punish. Like let's say you try and read their movement in, they fake you out and they hit you with this to punish. You know what? That's fine. That's okay. You got punished. It is what it is. That move is one of the best punishing moves in the game. What you don't want is to be very, very lazy with your movement and uh, they know exactly where you're going to be, so they feel free to throw this out. You want the Axe player to be worried every time they throw out a sidelight. Because again, sidelight is a punishable move. It has a good amount of recovery time on whiff. You know, you're stuck here for a little while. You can't cover yourself immediately. So you want to be careful uh, as an Axe user about just throwing this out willy nilly. But if you're playing against an Axe and your movement is, uh, you lock yourself in frames a lot. And what do I mean by lock yourself in frames? Like, let's say you're always attacking on cooldown, right? You're just mashing attack like this. If the Axe player just, you know, adjusts their timing by half a second, they're gonna be able to punish you in between your attacks. And then suddenly, you know, you're getting hit by Silent Nairs left and right. So how do you actually beat this move? Cause it feels like it has infinite range. Two things to keep in mind. Number one is when you use it, you're locked in a forward moving uh, momentum, right? So if these two players are walking towards each other, if the Finn and the Mirage are walking towards each other and the Finn sidelights, the sidelight will whiff. Think about that. The sidelight will whiff because it has to move forward. So if you're struggling against Axe and they're spacing you out like, out like this, you want to box them in. You want to get into close range. Because in close range, the only thing they can do is either this, which if you're just a little bit off, won't hit you in a forward direction, right? Or this. And this is higher risk. So you want to get in close and you want to put pressure on them by walking towards them. Because if you walk towards them, they're not going to be able to get this easy access to this move. It's going to whiff, you're going to be behind them, and then you're going to punish them. And again, sometimes you'll get red, sometimes you'll walk forward, they'll back up perfectly and hit you with it. But the idea is to make it so that they have to guess whether or not their sidelight's going to hit at all. You don't want it to be guaranteed all the time. You don't want to just throw out these attacks where you're, th you know, you're doing an end light from halfway across the map and there's no universe where it hits so they're just able to get this. You want to walk forward into their range and then attack where your attacks uh, will be in their hurtbox range, in their area of threat, and then attack. So avoiding sidelight is a lot, it, it, it's like, it, it is difficult, this is one of the best approaching moves in the game. And it's a lot about learning how momentum works, where people are able to use these attacks. Because if you're in this situation right now, sidelighting is a pretty big risk, because you're going off stage. Sidelighting here, like from here, is very easy to hit, but from here if you dash sidelight, it's going to whiff. And so you want to know the ranges of this attack. Its biggest strength is its biggest weakness, which is that it can't hit stack, it's that it moves a lot. And so if it moves a lot, the opponent needs to commit to a movement in order to use it. And if they commit to a movement, that's something you can read, that's something you can punish. So that's, uh, that's Axe Sidelight. The other thing that I quickly mention is locking yourself into active frames. And uh, that's one of the most common habits that uh, I tend to fall in personally. And I notice a lot of people tend to fall in as well. When you get caught in the vortex of you whiff, and then you're like, oh no, I need to hit them. So you immediately attack again, and then you whiff again. And you're like, oh no, I need to hit them again. And then you whiff again. And you just keep going to this rhythm of, okay, you whiff, and then the opponent punishes you. And you immediately try to attack again. Axe will eat you alive if you play to their rhythm. 
them. The reason why they'll eat you alive is because the moment you whiff, if they're in range, bada bing. Okay, I missed. I was going to say bada boom, and I was going to do this, but uh, just, okay, just pretend I did. Anyway, point is, is that you want to be very, very careful about following into the same timings and same habits of attack on, attack off, attack on, attack off, because that's how you get hit by side lights. How do you fix that? The moment you feel the impulse to just immediately attack after you whiff or immediately attack after you do, you know, X or Y, it, it depends on what it is for you, you know different people have different habits but when you notice yourself falling into that the re only reason why you're attacking is out of fear and not out of intention hold yourself back say no i'm not going to attack here and you'll notice the axe player may go for this and then that's a free hit so those are some things to keep in mind the last two things i want to talk about very quickly is avoiding axe dare baits and for axe dare baits it's a very similar story to axe dare baits with one other with one exception which is that you have to be careful about grounded dare or you know rising dare rising dare is a very popular option because it hits on the ground and it's very safe so to contest things like axe dare and, and falling axe dares and stuff like that one of the best things you can do is to punish them uh while jumping so to match their height if they're just trying to bait you uh something like a sword recovery is perfect to hit someone just trying to axe air you like this um or an unarmed nair an unarmed recovery anything that hits high very fast uh, is good and then everything i said about not getting baited by axe air is true for axe air the other thing is getting juggled so axe is one of the best juggling tools in the game or sets of juggling tools in the game between like all of these moves that hit you upward uh things that a lot of people tend to do is the moment they get hit up they jump which, uh, it, it, which I would recommend to, uh, I mean, depending on the positioning, right? If the Axe player is just staying grounded, you get hit up and then you immediately jump. All you're doing is giving yourself one less jump to get back to the ground. So like, let's say this Mirage instantly jumps when I hit them right there. Like, okay, in white, it may make sense because I can nair them. But like, if they immediately jump right here, they're just giving themselves one less option to get back to the ground. So when people get juggled and they're juggled for the entire stock and they can never land, a lot of the reason, or a lot of the time, it's because they only come back with one, you know, w one tool in their toolkit. Like I mentioned earlier, adding more tools to your toolkit is important. So rather than just always falling down or always blowing all your jumps and then trying to fast fall down, you can do a few things to get back to the ground, you know? Let's, let's say I'm in the air here, I got juggled, I have no options, I can dodge in a different direction. I can fall to one direction if they don't have enough movement speed, I can, you know, cover my landing with an attack. I can uh, go back down to the wall, I can, you know, maybe do one extra dodge up and then land. There's a lot of different options you can do to, uh, to escape a juggle, and it's all just about learning what you have, learning your different options, not wasting them too early, and, uh, and not uh, always doing the same thing. Because the, the best thing you can do for yourself as a player is not to win. It's to just try a lot of different things because the next time you're in a tournament match or you know you're, you're playing for ten thousand dollars it's very different than playing for you know 10 elo right if you're playing for 10 elo you can try a bunch of things realize it doesn't work and then move on if you're playing for ten thousand dollars you want the things you're trying to be tried and true you know things that you know will work so give yourself the chance to lose and try a bunch of different options and just realize what works and realize what doesn't work and you know mix things up and that's the biggest thing how to beat any weapon in Brawlhalla, the TLDR, is to mix things up. Because if you're losing to the same thing over and over again, it's likely because you're doing the same things over and over again. And how do you not do the same things over and over again? You try something new, realize it doesn't work, then try something new, realize it doesn't work, then try something new, realize it does work, and then try the first thing again, and suddenly that first thing worked. And you're like, how does that work? So... There we go, that's Super Crash Course, How to Be Axe. Again, I'm gonna be doing every single weapon, so let me know which one you wanna see next, and uh, it'll probably be Lance. Let's be honest here, it's gonna be Lance.